So today we're going to unbox, take a look at the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. And this is the M3 Max processor with 30 cores and metal 3 and a 36 gigabyte of RAM. That'll run you around $34.99. And interestingly, when you just open it right out of the box, not even plugged in, it boots right up. So, in other words, it includes a free tank of gas. That's nice for $34.99. It does have the braided power cord. You can order uh, different power charging options, but it comes with the MagSafe on the one side power cord and a brick for the wall. A little bit of paper comes with it, not much in terms of a manual, just a couple diagrams and of course the old Apple stickers. The brick itself is a two-prong plug. It's going to go into the wall obviously and it has a USB-C on the back. The mouse pad is really, really generous. I thought the 13-inch the MacBook Air that I had had a huge mouse pad, but this is absolutely almost double. I mean it's a huge amount. You could even potentially use two hands with multiple fingers on this thing. Um, it's very generous, but of course there's more real estate to rest your hand on either side, so it would make sense that they could expand that. The touch bar is gone, as we know. Uh, the function keys are there. You have a touch ID button to log in, log out. And then on the sides is these very tiny machined holes for speakers. And the sound on this is really amazing. The bass is way better than the MacBook Air. It just has a solider bass to it. And up in the top notch, of course, is the camera, so your boss can see when you're on Teams if you're actually at your desk. On the side, it has the SD card reader, a USB-C, and an HDMI cable port. On the other side, you got the MagSafe charger port, another USB-C port, and the headphone jack. Now, taking a look at the bottom of it, just to see what's inside and what's upgradable, you find this pentagon-shaped screw. Um, it's not a Torx driver, it's not a Phillips or a flathead, but it is this number 5 star driver that I was able to find at Home Depot. I'll we'll link to that below. Essentially, once you get the right precision screwdriver bit, um, you can take it apart. So I, need, I needed this number 5 star driver because nothing else fit, and it seems to be that this is what works for Apple products. Now there's eight screws on the bottom if you do need to take it apart and do maintenance. Of course, unplug it, turn it off, all that stuff. There's four on the back and four on the front. And interestingly, the four on the one half are longer than the four on the other half. So try to remember that when you put them back in. There's a trick to getting the top off, and I'll link to that under the iFixit article that I found. But basically, you need a plastic shim to be able to pop a couple of um, pressure-mounted um, locks that are on it or clips that are on it and once inside you can see that most of the bottom half of it is all battery so again this is an old change that Apple made instead of having a single battery you can swap out over time they've portioned the battery into smaller units which they say gains them more battery life for the user on the back side you've got a lot of vents the wires for the screen and the wires for the camera um, as well as a bunch of transistor welded components. On the side here is the SD card reader, which I believe is very unique to the Pro line in terms of the MacBook Airs. I don't think you can get that feature. And up front on the right and left, uh, I think that's either a heat sink or a speaker. But yeah, overall, it's very neatly organized. There's no way I can find on this by looking at it that you could upgrade the hard drive over time or upgrade the memory. And it is funny how you can see a bit of a face in the machine here. It reminds me of the old Finder image from Mac OS 8 or 9, or maybe something off of a Mayan temple. And just putting it back together, just putting the screws back in. Again, the short ones go on one length of it, and the long ones go on the other length of it. It is cool the MacBook Pro name is machined into the floor, uh, the tray on the bottom, if you have the cam computer upside down. And the slots on the side, which nostalgically make me think, oh, a slot loading CD-ROM. No, they're probably either air vents and or sound vibration holes for the speakers because the bass on this is above and beyond what the MacBook Air has. 
And to compare it a little closer up to the MacBook Air 13 inch that I reviewed and I'll link to that below as well, um, you can see it's sub substantially larger. It's supposed to be three inches more in diagonal viewing, but to just to give you an idea, um, both in the three fingers or so on the one side and two on the top. So both in the length and the width of it, you know, as well as the height of it, it's just slightly higher on the height. But even beyond that, I can tell you the feeling of holding the two, the, the MacBook Air is closer to an iPad. The MacBook Pro is closer to a, a lunchbox made out of metal with a thermos in it. It's a nice heavy unit. So hopefully this was helpful and thanks for watching and commenting below. Hit the bell button to subscribe and the thumbs up to help with the algorithms. Thank you.